separated out, the dead ones, the live ones, and there's probably other sea life Good. attached to it or awesome. in there and uh, get that stuff into the little cups and stuff. And that's what they'll use for their uh, rest of the so they'll, they'll take a look at that. Here are some charms. Um. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Last year we got, we got a uh, crab on this that was small. That's clear. We got a crab that was smaller than my pinky nail, but you could just already still tell it was a crab. artificial fertilizer. When we flush our toilets, when we fertilize our farm fields, when we have big animal operations, 
that all runs into the bay and it makes something grow. Too much of it. What is the thing that grows that's a problem? Yeah. Phytoplankton. Algae, right? And when I say algae, I want you guys to say, Ugh. ready? Algae. Yeah. Right. Algae's a problem. I mean, there's algae in pretty much any healthy environment. So it's a water based environment, but we have too much. Correct. So, part of what we're talking about today is that algae and that nitrogen that's going into the water. You can't see the nitrogen, but you can see the algae. All right, these cups represent water in the bay 400 years ago, water in the bay 100 years ago, and water in the bay today. Okay. I've got three sponges here. So the biggest sponge represents the northern part of the bay is low salt. The oysters in the bay 400 years ago. Those oysters, what did they do? Did you see them on top of the water? Because of the ocean Yes. They formed oyster. Uh, down reefs. Okay, and what's the difference between a reef and a bar? Yeah. That's right. So these oyster reefs actually stuck up out of the water. They provided lots and lots of habitat for other animals, and they also did a really important thing. No? Yes. They helped to clean the bay. They are filter feeders. Now, you guys have to pretend to be oysters. Open your mouth just a tiny bit. Suck in air like this. You are feeding like an oyster right now. Oysters will breathe in or absorb their atmosphere, so sucking it in, and then what's going to happen is they're going to be eating little things that are in the water, that plankton you talked about. What about the sediment and stuff that they also get? What happens to that? Well, they poop it out. In the form of pseudo feces, oysters do poop. Everybody poops. So turns out that is the truth. That is just the truth about the world. Oysters also poop. So these oysters are going to be constantly feeding the water. 400 years ago, it took them one day to clean the water in the bay. John Smith said he could see down 20 feet to the bottom. And you guys will get to test. Do you think you could see 20 feet down today? No. Question though, we know these oysters are cleaning, they're doing a pretty darn good job, but what pollution is going into the bay 400 years ago? Who lived here then? Alright, move down. And so, no So there's no pesticides, there's no, what else? What else? Is, are there cars? No fumes. No fumes? No factories? Or is there trash bags and plastic stuff? No. There's less of it, right? How well do you think the oysters will filter what little pollution there was in the bay then? Okay. Here's another test. We have a tiny amount. The water is still really clear, right? Just like John Smith says. Now, 100 years ago. This is 400. This is 100. What do we notice about the oysters? Okay. So, what do you think is going to happen now? 
What do you predict? Is the water going to be clearer than 400 years ago? Dirtier. And will the oysters be able to keep up? No. Okay, so this is our 400 year old oyster. They are the bay's natural filter. And what does the bay clearly need more of? So what the word? So filters. Filters. Okay. So we can see that oysters are a big part of the solution. So what are we doing to try to have more oysters in the bay? And we also have the other that are plants. Should we name the other one? Artificial oyster reef. Oh, hi, that was awesome. That's really good. And that is something we're doing. We're creating artificial oyster reefs. We don't have what else is something we can do to help oysters? Yeah. Help, try to, help try to have less sediment in the bay. And that's a big problem, too, because they got smothered. Now, if you got smothered, what would happen? Now, oyster, if you're smothered, what happens to you? You suffocate. That's exactly what happens to the oysters in the bay. All right, so you guys have have really come up with great answers. I thought this was interesting. In the water, what salinity? Uh, how much salt? Correct. How much salt? We're going to text and see how much salt is in this water. If it's too much salt, certain things can't grow well. If it's not enough salt, other things can't grow well. And so the salinity of the water is very important as, and it has a big effect on what's growing here in the bay and on the bay. So that being said, why don't we do it? This tool is called a salinity refractometer. Big fancy name for salt test. Before, I'll show you how we do it. Before we left the harbor, we collected some And this is a little bit of it. Let's talk a little of it up.
Now, in, in this refractometer, you will see blue and you'll see white. The top part is blue, the bottom part is white. Where they meet, there's a line across there, there's a number. Tell me what the number is. And that number is the amount of salinity in the water.
creatures ought to put some dead ones do too. Because it is slow. It would be having its two shells open if it was dead. And we most likely would probably find other organisms in it. Now, it's amazing. No. It's amazing that it is in some respects still alive. Because you can see where it has been ravaged by disease. Notice these little pond marks in it that um, they have also on this that is an indication of how it's been fighting disease. So I will carefully pass this around to you. It won't fight or anything. Observe the polyclete. Observe the sea squirt. And I'm going to pass it this way. And it what? This? Right now, if they can stay out of water and still be alive for 20 minutes. And basically, they shut down their system. We did not find, unfortunately, I gather we didn't find no mud crabs. And so, here is another thing that we found down there. Is this an oyster shell? No. What is it? A brick. It's a, a rock. And many times, because like even the baby oysters, the spat, once they go to settle down, Oysters are kind of like kids. They like to move around and play around for a while before they settle down. And when they settle down, they want a hard surface to settle on. And so they'll settle on each other or maybe settle on a rock. In this case, it wasn't oysters who settled on a rock. It was what? Particles that settled on this rock. So again, it's something that is not normally found, but it's good. We've got five minutes.